harmony. Praise God. I was talking about harmony. When you get to this office and you are the only person who cannot agree with the rest, you are the only person. You quarrel with the watchman. You quarrel with the teacher. You quarrel with I don't know who. You quarrel with the office messenger. You quarrel with the person on the switchboard. Praise the Lord. Then understand. If you are not such a hateful person, if you are not that wicked, you know, have you ever suffered in a place until you sit and you ask people, am I that wicked? Am I that wicked? Because you look at your life and the things that are happening to you in that office, they indicate that you are such a wicked person. And when you, when you judge yourself sincerely, in a sincere heart, you know you are not wicked. Praise God. Uh, please mute your mic. Mute your mics in Jesus' name. Mute your mics. You know, you, you, everything shows that to you, you are not a bad person. But in this place, it, it looks like you are the alien. You are the one out of space. You are the one who cannot agree with anybody. You are the one who cannot, you, you are not just, you are just suffering. You are a lone ranger in that place. Mm -hmm. That one should also be the indicator that the spirit of witchcraft mm -hmm. is operating in your office, in your business premises, in your marketplace. Because sometimes you, if let's say there are people who maybe their shop is next to your shop and when they're not there, their neighbors are selling for them. Mm -hmm. uh, how much is this? That one, she's selling that ball. Bring it. They put it for you there. But if you find that you, when you are not there, you are things they can even rot there. Nobody will care. And when you come, they're looking, when you, when you hear what they are saying, they are talking as if they can't touch your things. And these are people you've helped. These are people you, 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 you have no beef with them. But when it comes to helping you, when it comes to doing anything that is going to support you, it looks like you have beef. That should also be an indicator. The other one is, you know, things that people don't, uh, don't pay attention to, and that is their salary. Have you ever seen a place where people work the, in, their, in their accounts office, their names are among those who received their pay, but in their account, it's zero, zero. Their pay did not get to their account. I don't know if this is common only in Africa or all over the world, but witchcraft is universal. Something, something, something happens. There's always an error that makes your payments not just possible. I don't know. If you supply, let's say, food to schools and they have this board meeting that they sit once per year to pay everybody, you know, those who have worked in schools in Kenya, I don't know about other countries, there are places where if you're taking the maize or you're taking the beans or you're taking the rice or you're taking the oil, you do it for a the whole term and then they will pay you at end of term. That's after three months. So you find when they were dispersing these payments, your payments did not come. Always, it's, who was I praying for? I was praying for this guy. His name was Frank, I think. Who had worked in this company and they had not paid him for a whole year. A whole year. And it is forever in the office. I, not my pay, but we paid. Now they start stressing the money. The money is hanging somewhere between the office, the, the, their bank and his bank account. It's lost in there. So they must stress the money. Where did it go to? Where is it? Uh, one time his money was where? I think in America or somewhere. I don't know. From a bank in Kenya. He, he, his pay was forever never getting to his account. Until one day somebody told him, I told you, you would, we, we, we will not work together. So in other words, you are working for nothing. You are not working. They don't, you are not counted. In the real files of that office, in that, uh, in that business, in that company, your name is a shadow. Praise the Lord. Your name is a shadow. So that's how come you will not be paid in time. They, you go to complain and they say, why are you complaining? We paid. We paid. Yes. 
you know, and they give you details and they tell you to follow it up. And then you go to the bank for three weeks and then you have to go back to the office and tell them it is not working. And then now it's end, time, it's end month again. And they do the same thing. And then you even start thinking, oh, this accountant has issues with me. What is wrong? And then by God's luck or through your prayers, they now bring in a, another, another auditor, another account person. And the story continues. This other one is your friend, and now you're like, Fuchs, the demon who was here really tormented me. But this now, this new one, he pays, it doesn't, it, it doesn't reflect anywhere. The same story. And now you there's nothing you can say. You you are wondering, your kids are home, your house is almost being locked, or the mortgage is catching up with you, the bank is coming after you. It's not like you've not worked, it's not like you've not delivered something. You have, but the payment to get into your hands. Oh my God, nothing. So that's one way of knowing that witchcraft is operating against you in your office. And then guess what? There's something else. You could be getting the payments, you get them, but the money is like you are carrying water in a basket. This particular job, you've, you've worked for this company for so many years and they've paid you a lot of money but you have not even a paper bag to show for that money. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Some offices, bosses allocate one person as their sacrifice. And when they say this one person will be useless in this company, they can promote you, promote you physically. They promote you to the highest level. However, that money is it, it's paper, it's air. It's shadow, it's nothing. When you get it, it could be a million, it could be $10,000, it could be $2,000, it could be good money that any other person, if they get that kind of money, they by the time they are 26, they have a house, they have a car, they have, I don't know what, they're starting up another company, you, 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 you. You are struggling to pay school fees for your children. You are quarreling with your partner every day because it's like you are irresponsible. You have no financial sense. Why? Because the spirit of witchcraft in the office is dealing squarely with you. Praise the Lord. This is Amen. a wide topic. This is, this is something that if God can just open your eyes and you see the places where we work and see the places where we preach and see the places where we get our daily bread, you can now start praying seriously because you see, I don't know why in the church, prayer for work has been left for the jobless. <laughs> uh, the jobless and those who are running their own companies because they want a profit. But those ones who are employed, they have an, you know, uh, medical insurance, they have holiday insurance, they have uh, house rent something, they have this bonus, this bonus, this allowance. Uh, forever they are thanking God for the day, trusting God for the next day. And that's why you find many of them, the only difference between them and these ones who are crying out, I have no, I have no job, I have no job. The only difference is that when they borrow, People give them in confidence. I mean, you are working, end month you'll pay. You see somebody who doesn't work when they borrow, you're like, and where will you get money to pay me? Pray, I ask. <laughs> but this one who is working, ah, end month, she will pay. So that's the only difference. They're not forever begging. Hey, this one, hey, that they are in 20 circles. All the banks in the country know them. They have an account there for their purpose. It's all purpose you know, purposefully opening that account so that you can borrow from them. In fact, for you to open the account, you have to look at their <laughs> loaning, yeah. loaning terms. If they are agreeable, aye, that's your bank. Praise the Lord. So the Bible Amen. says we shall be givers and not borrowers in the name of Jesus. So each one of you, wherever you are working, I want you to look at your, your place again look at your environment again through the eyes of faith praise god and look at look look at your look at your benefits your profits are you making a profit do you look like you work where you say you work or where you work praise god because i've seen people who work in offices where they are paid very well but when you look at them they look like they are your sham your farm and praise god so yes that is it but now let us look at this prophet from judah 
I love this prayer point. It is the only one we are going to pray for today uh, against this office witchcraft. This is the only prayer we're going to pray today. And I pray that even if you think in your office, there's no witchcraft, even if you think in your environment, there's no witchcraft, please pray. Somebody said prayers are never wasted. When you pray, if it's it's irrelevant, if it's not applicable, it's okay. You've just wasted what? Five minutes energy. But if in case it is applicable uh, without your knowledge, then you've salvaged your life. Praise the Lord. Uh, when the guy reached that altar, I want to read for you that prayer point. In verse 2 of 13, Kings, 1 Kings 13, verses 2, by the word of the Lord, he cried out against the altar 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 this is what the lord says a son named josiah will be born to the house of david on you he will sacrifice the priest of the high places who make offerings here and human bones will be bound on you praise the lord you can translate it into your environment into your to fit your situation you look at your if you work in an office uh, it has a name uh, you look at that office, you call it its name, uh, and you command every altar that has been set up in that place to destroy the lives of the workers in the name of Jesus Christ, to eat its owner, command it. The altar has an earring ear to hear. That's why the prophets spoke to the altar, not to the priests. In fact, it was explaining to the altar what it would do to its priest, praise God. So why was it doing it? Because the altar could hear, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, just, to, just to confirm it to you, we look at Deuteronomy, what? Let me look at it here. In the book of Deuteronomy, mm. Hallelujah, Reba Shenda Mukate Marabogo Zikarabaya. Mante Kere Bebe Namaze Kere Bebe Namazo Koroboborabai. Hallelujah. It's in, in Deuteronomy 30. I love that scripture. Mm, is it verse 12? Hey, you know me, I can't see this Bible. 12 equals him. So. Hallelujah where he declares, I call upon the heaven and the earth to bear witness today that I have commanded you. Hallelujah. Or is it beyond the sea? Where is it in Deuteronomy chapter 30? I command today the Lord your his commandment and we'll see. In Deuteronomy 30, when you read it, there's a place where it says, I am calling heaven and the earth to bear witness that I have set before you, good and bad. Choose good, praise God, uh, that you, you, will, you will live. Choose good that you will live, you and your children. So uh, I can't locate it in this Bible and I can't even see it properly. Thank so. You. It's then in Deuteronomy 30. So guess what? 1319. Yeah. Thank you. Look at 1319. Where is 19? Okay, let me see. Okay, yeah, 1319. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. I call the heaven and the earth as witnesses. Before we pray, who is a witness? You cannot be a witness if you cannot do what? Recount the events as they happened one by one. So for you to be a witness, you must have eyes, good eyesight. For you to be a witness, you must be of good mental health. Praise God, you must be sober. I have never seen a case where... Uh, a madman was standing next to a, to, to a fight. People were fighting and a madman was there. And when they come, the person they look for to be a witness is a madman. 
imagine it will not happen even if the madman was there from beginning to finish they will not ask him to be a witness why his mental ability is not okay so for you to be a witness your mind must be okay mm -hmm. for you to be a witness your memory must be okay because we are talking about we are signing a treaty today but in case 10 years from today there's trouble we will call you back to say what happened to recount the events so for you to be a witness you have to be living you have to be alive and well so for heaven and earth to be a witness praise god then they must uh, they must they must hold the values of a living creature of a living thing so that is why i want to just uh, just to tell you in the office there could be an altar it is made of wood. It is something small. It is a ring. It is a small stone. It is something funny. It is a, a small carving, very small, that you cannot, you cannot think much about it, but it is an altar. It is it beareth witness. It is carrying command. It is carrying out instruction as per the priest who gave it to the person who is holding it. Praise God. So that altar, you have to face it in the name of Jesus and command it to eat its owner. Eat its owner. Who put it in that office? Is it the owner of the business? Is it is it the owner of the building? Praise God. Who is it? let it turn against him and his priest because there must be a priest somewhere who is ministering to that person so that they can be able to carry out their witchcraft i want you to face those altars in your workplace in the name of jesus and pray against them uh, as god gives us permission maybe when we meet on friday we can do more prayers against that witchcraft in the office in the name of jesus i want you to face it you altar operating in my office against my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, I scatter you. I render you power. Destroy that altar. Let the altar destroy its honor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Reba shenda rabo zeke tena mazeka rabaya. Rembo bo zeke tena mazoko tia mazaya. Reba bo zeke tena mazoko in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, lose your power, lose your power, lose your power, lose your power, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, start on that altar, start on it in the mighty name of Jesus, get strong in the mighty name of Jesus, Right now, 
I want you to put your right hand on your chest and declare this in the name of Jesus. Every old prophet to my young prophet. Old prophet to my young prophet. Every old prophet to my young prophet. Young prophet. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will one of us now and forevermore. Amen. May you go and take over your workplace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Let's meet on Friday by the grace of God. Invite others and thank you for joining us. God bless you so, so much and God give you victory. Amen. Amen.